Good morning again. I'm Maurice Barrett and I've got another food for thought for you. I've been thinking about Christian yoga. Is there such a thing as Christian yoga? Well, the answer is no. You can't put the word Christian in front of something and make it right if it's not acceptable to Bible principles. In the same way, there's no such thing as Christian music despite what the, what people say, because there's no Christian style of music. You can't identify it as Christian music. It's either jazz or rock or folk or rhythm and blues or Motown. There's styles of music, but there's no Christian style of music. There are, however, Christians who play music, and they play different styles of music. So in the same way, there's no such thing as Christian yoga, but there are people, there are Christians who practice yoga. So it's not Christian yoga, it's just yoga. So the question is, should a disciple of Christ be practicing yoga? And I'm convinced the answer is no, for the following reasons. Yoga comes from the East, from Hinduism, and it's a religious practice, and you can't Christianize it for the reason I've stated. And it leads on to Kundalini Yoga, and uh, Kundalini is uh, a coil snake, the form of divine feminine energy, or Shakti, believed to be located at the base of the spine in a Muladhara. Well, let me give you a quote about Kundalini. A Kundalini awakening can bring you to self-realization of the soul as an immortal being. You may reach a state of bliss and resounding love. You may have a quiet mind so it calms you, it de-stresses you. I understand that it works. It's what spirit's making it work. That's my problem. The positions in yoga are actually worship positions to Hindu gods. There's 35 million Hindu gods. And I've heard that Christians say, well, I'm not into the spirituality. I just do yoga to, to relax and de-stress myself. Well, and I think about Jesus as I'm doing it. Well, thinking about Jesus doesn't make something acceptable. If I steal something, and I think about Jesus while I'm stealing, it doesn't make stealing acceptable. It, it, it's immaterial what you think about it if you're doing the wrong action. You know, Israel worshipped God around the golden calf. They were, But they were dancing naked around the golden calf. But they were worshipping the real God. They weren't worshipping the real God, they only thought they were. They, they were worshipping Satan through a golden calf, but their mouth was worshipping God. And Jesus said it, Matthew 15 verse 8, These people draw near unto me with their mouth and honour me with their lips, but their hearts far from me. And Mark 7, 7, How be it in vain they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. When you bring the the world into the church, they the world's converted you. You can't use the world to convert the church. Well, it's a big subject, but yoga's the thin end of the wedge and leads on to other new age practices. It, it's like marijuana, maybe it's got health and medicinal values, but soft drugs lead to hard drugs. And actually music, as I'm an audio engineer, and Music is the first drug that many kids get on because it gives you an altered state of consciousness. So it's dangerous to meddle with these things. The Bible says have nothing to do with familiar spirits and that's what you're doing when you practice yoga. I know a lady uh, who was filled with the Holy Ghost. This is 40 years ago, but she started to practice yoga. And uh, she needed deliverance. My father cast something out of her. So if you use yoga to de-stress and to relax, then you're using yoga as a drug to give you an altered state of consciousness. 
music could do the same. If you use music to make you feel better, to impress you, it's the wrong use of music. God gave us music to express ourselves. Meditation, mindfulness are all at the end of the wedge. And I have to warn you, keep away from these practices. When a true believer is stressed or downcast, they don't look to alleviate the stress. They look at the cause of the stress. They go to the roots of the problem. Disciples of Jesus don't deal with the symptoms when they're sick. They deal with the roots. When they're stressed, they deal with the roots. Why am I sick? David was a good example. One of the Psalms, he said, Why are you cast down, O my soul? He was asking himself why he was downcast. He didn't play his, pick his harp up and play songs to make him feel better. He dealt with the root, why are you downcast? And he looks at his situation and he ends up in the psalm saying, well, I'll praise the Lord. Is any merry, let him sing psalms. It doesn't say is any sad, let him sing psalms to make him happy. He said, if you're happy, express yourself, sing psalms. But if you're depressed, you need to deal with the root of the problem. Don't go to stretching exercises in yogas to de-stress yourself. Exercise is good but not as a way to relieve the stress you need to deal with the roots. This is what Christianity is about, getting to the roots of the problems, honesty. And meditation will never deal with the roots. Well, time's gone. It's a short study. I hope I've made you think about this practice and it's rushing into mainstream Christianity. Well, time's gone. Have a blessed and stress-free day and... Keep thinking.